Faster dry down is really very critical to making sure that you can retain high quality in alfalfa hay, and there's several different reasons for that. Uh, the first reason is um, the crop, when it's first cut, is still alive, and the crop will respire. So when, it, when a crop respires, that means it uses up carbon, and it generates, um, out of the sugars and, and the carbohydrates that are in the crop, which are nutritious to animals, are uh, respired into carbon dioxide and, and released into the atmosphere. So it's a waste. It's a waste of both quality and quantity. The second is the impact that, that rapid dry down uh, will have on, on the crop production. All regions where alfalfa is grown, but in the irrigated west, I think there's something different about that is if you can get a crop off, say, in two days, that means you can get the water back on the field in two days. If it takes you 10 days, you're starving your crop for water for the next 10 days. Uh, and, and so in the irrigated west, that's a really key issue. And, and the field that we're in here, this grower wants to take this, these bales off and he'll start the pivots off immediately after these bales are taken off. And that's because the crop is ready to be watered and, and we, need to, we need to supply the amount of moisture necessary for, for this uh, temperature in midsummer here. And in the east, it's even as important or more important because the uh, longer the drying period, the more risk you have from rain damage. The other side of the coin is that uh, if, you, if you're going to take 10 days to dry down your hay crop, um, in many parts of the United States, that's a pretty high risk for, for uh, rain damage. And rain damage is a really, we know it's a big hazard for, for uh, hay quality. If we have to wait five or six days or an eight or nine to bale the hay, then that alfalfa started to regrow. And then when we drive over the field with the baler and the tractor and the wagons to haul the hay off, we're breaking off those stems of regrowth that have started and we're reducing the yield of next cutting. Now that again is why we wanna get our hay off the field as quickly as we can. One of the misconceptions that we've had for most of the last 30 years is the whole concept of conditioning. And conditioning is important, but we need to remember that we have two parts of the plant that are drying. We have the leaves that are, we're drying and we have the stems that are drying. We want to be careful to adjust our conditioner on our mower so that we get adequate crimping. And there are two adjustments that we should pay attention to. One is the spacing of the rollers, which can be set at the factory, but you should really check. and. Um, we would like something around uh, a sixteenth to an eighteenth of an inch spacing of the steel condition of the steel rollers. Then the second adjustment is the tension of the two rollers together. Generally, the spacing of the rollers is adjusted for the diameter of the crop that you're harvesting. And smaller diameter crops like alfalfa will have closer roller spacing than larger diameter crops like uh, sorghum sedan grass. The other thing then that we want to pay attention to is the tension on the rollers. And basically that is related to the yield of the field. The higher the yield, we'll back off the tension a little bit. When yield is less, we'll increase the tension. The important test there is, is your alfalfa really getting crimped? When we crimp alfalfa, we break the stem, and you can see it's happened here. Then water can come out and dry, and here it was crimped, and there it was crimped. And so what we're looking at, and we actually have a couple more in here. This is good. What we'd like to see is a crimping about every two inches, I'll say. Uh, and so if you're not getting it to crimp this often, then you should increase the tension on the rollers so that you do break the stem every couple inches so that when it's in the wind row, the water can come out of those points and that stem can dry faster than if it were not broken. We have no trouble drying down leaves in alfalfa. The leaves die down, dry down very, very rapidly in alfalfa hay. It's the stem moisture that really is a problem and we need to get that stem dry down to a certain level. So this is why we want to see a combination of uh, intensive conditioning that is crimping that, of the swather. We want to see a combination of wide wind rows that allow the solar radiation to pull that moisture down very, very, very quickly. 
And, um, and we also want to see um, the whole process to take a relatively short length of time. So there's some big differences between the leaf and the stem and that's really one of the uh, key challenges for growers when they're thinking about harvesting methods. Conditioning helps dry the stems, but it does not help the leaves dry. And this is why the biggest single factor in hay making is to spread the hay out in a wide swath to let it intercept as much sunlight as possible and then those leaves will dry more quickly and then at about 50 or 60 percent moisture we rake or merge into a windrow and then let the stems continue drying for hay making if we're doing that. So one of the things that we want to watch when we're making a windrow coming out of the conditioner is that if we're not careful the edges get much thicker than the inside of the swath. And this happens because we're, we're cutting a 13 or a 16 foot or more down to, uh, in this case, it looks like about six feet. So we're pulling the whole edge in here. Now, this is something we'd like not to see because these thicker edges don't dry as well. And in fact, this was mowed yesterday but if we lift up these thick parts, it's just as green as when it was cut and as wet, you can feel it. On the other hand, if we look in the middle here where it's thinner, it has dried significantly. So this is a well-made swath that is very uniform across the entire thickness. And therefore we don't have the uh, wetter forage on the edge that we did in the previous swath. We have a good thickness across the middle that is drying and it extends all the way to the other side. So uniformity of this swath is one of the key components of getting it to dry well.